Hi folks, Jim Chapman here with the uh, proof copy, the preprint copy of my new book, Battle of the Bands, London, Canada's 1960s teen music explosion with special added content, Uncle Jimmy's Excellent Adventure, Memories of a Musician's Life. I've been working on this book for almost two and a half years. Many of you have contributed to it. There are 88 stories in here from folks in London, mostly teenagers in the 60s, a couple of adults, Dick Williams is in there and a couple of others. Uh, first person stories of what it was like to be here in that most exciting time to be a teen in London and for people like me to be a teen musician. Um, the book has over 200,000 words, uh, 540 pictures of the 1960s, London in the 1960s, the bands, the people that were here, the places where teens hung out, the places where we went to eat, the styles that we wore, the radio stations we listened to, the disc jockeys we listened to, the TV shows we watched, Hullabaloo and Shindig, the first rock and roll shows on television too. First time we had a chance to really see the people that uh, uh, that we were following so so carefully, other than places like the Ed Sullivan Show, where you didn't see much of them. Also, in in the first uh, section of the book, in the Battle of the Bands, is the story of the Christmas 1966 Battle of the Bands and all the groups that played in that, and uh, um, what that meant to the music scene. Certainly, what it meant to me in my career, because the uh, my band, the Blues and Review, was uh, uh, fortunate enough to to win that battle and, and got a recording con got a couple of recording contracts, one of which turned out and one which didn't, but led us to a lot of very very interesting things in the latter part of the '60s. So that battle of the bands was very important to us and very important to a lot of other groups too. The whole story of that is in here. I don't want to take too much time with it. I, was, I want you to see the book. It's a coffee table book with the full cover, high quality paper. Um, heavy-duty, high-quality cover, um, top-quality picture uh, reproduction. It's uh, color throughout. Not every picture is color, but most are. Um, we That was a decision we made because that added a lot to the cost, but I thought it also added a lot to the book. So the book covers, Battle of the Bands, covers uh, basically from 1960 to 1960 to the end of 1969 and all the local bands that made that period of time such a just an explosive place to be for teenagers for teenage culture for the teen scene and for teenage music in particular it features all of the bands there's more than uh, 80 bands in here all the bands from the 1960s in London who built a following uh, we don't have every basement band or every band that, you know, played on their back porch and had a few people drop by, but we have all the bands that played at least 15 jobs for teen audiences during that period of time. That meant if you played that many, you were an established band or you wouldn't get that much work. So there's 80, I think 85 groups that maybe 86 that made that cut. They're all in here. There's Johnny Stevens and the Canadians. Uh, there's Brian Pauley with uh, the Prophets. And the Apostles, there's the Viscounts and Gary and the O'Teens, all early London bands. There's Chuck Rover, who was my one of my musical mentors in the center there. That was his very first band, the Lucerne's. And uh, Ray Hathrell, longtime friend of mine, London businessman, his first and only band. But uh, they're in the book. There is tons of background information here. I had so many people contact me not just to tell their stories, but lots of people who didn't want to tell their stories and wanted me to tell them, or they wanted to pass on information to me. There's a lot of detailed information in this book about these bands. There's the Copper Tones, very well-known band. There's Greg Brown and the Novels. Greg went on to have a, a, a million seller, international million seller with Put Your Hand in the Hand, a band called Ocean. And he's a, he's a local guy, London guy. There's Johnny Stevens again, the Teltones, and and uh, Greg's band, the Novels, the first three live bands I ever saw. Um, and we can go through the book. There's the, the I mentioned about the radio stations. There's some of the DJs. There's Cousin Brucey. There's Dick Williams. There's Hal Weaver. There's Paul Steve from CHO. There's Jim Blake. Uh, oh, we got some young people kissing too. Tisk tisk tisk. Hey, you can't be a teenager without a little kissing. Um, we've got some TV, as I mentioned, a bunch of stuff on TV, and not just music. There's Sir Graves Ghastly, which lots of us watched. Glarty, Dick Clark, Lloyd Faxton, lots of stuff on TV. There's stuff about teen fashions, too. A story about the Church of the Resurrection, a very popular dance uh, spot here in town. Anyway, the book is full of 
pictures of, and stories of the bands. Here's the listing of all the bands. As far as I know, every established band in London from 1960 to the end of 69, with everybody who played in the band and the instruments they played. And uh, I'll tell you, that was the single biggest challenge of the entire book was getting all of that information and getting it verified, too. So pictures from teenagers is Glenna Faye Ross, who was a regular at the Church of the Resurrection. She's got a great story in here. There's Ken Allison and uh, and the Blues from Review playing at Weevil High School, I think. And there's Judy Atro. Those Some of you might know Judy Atro. There she is in that white dress looking as pretty as ever at the concert. There's the Archangels and the Undertakers. Anyway, as I said, we could go through here forever. The Graham Lear's band. Graham is here in here several times. As many of you will know, uh, went on to a great career with Santana and Ario Speedwagon and Juno Vanelli and Paul Anka. Uh, he's in here, including a, a, a grand telling story of his very first gig, the first job he ever played with a rock and roll band. There's features in here on the Stork Club in Port Stanley on Wonderland. Um, uh, all the venues that we played are mentioned here. There's the Five Rogues. You can't talk about London bands without the Five Rogues and the influence they had on the London scene. There's the Stage 7. Uh, there's Billy Durst, and eventually Bill ended up in Thundermug. Great career that continues today. Uh, the Tempos, lots and lots of bands in here. There's a double double page spread on George Oliver and a, a wonderful interview I had with George, and a double page spread on Grant Smith. Now, George is not a local guy, but had such an influence on the London scene that he's in the book. And there is a double page spread in here from Grant Smith. There's the new set. There's the Marquis, who became the London set. Um, oh, there's Kathy B. Jackson with one of her early bands. She was a very well-known local performer back in the 60s. Here are the pictures of the Battle of the Bands in Christmas 1966 that uh, changed the whole landscape of popular music, teen music in London. All the bands that played in it, stories about it. Uh, some of the Toronto bands that came here. There's the, there's the page about... Uh, uh, about George Oliver, uh, with some stuff about my band, The Blues and Review. A great concert, one of the big teen concerts of the 60s at the London Arena with Freddie Cannon and Brian Hyland and the Apostles and The Blues and Review backing them up. That was a tremendous show. One of the biggest teen shows ever in the 1960s in London. Uh, I mentioned Grant. Where's Grant? I think Grant, I think Grant is right. Grant Smith, yes, Grant Smith is right here. It's a double page on Grant, how he got started in his career and where it went in the power and the uh, E.G. Smith and the Express and his early days as a drummer, not a singer at all. So there are lots of stuff in here about Grant. Wayne, uh, Wayne Stone, who was in in the Grant Smith and the Power, went on to play in Motherlode and had a number one international million seller with One I Die. Was, Stoney's got a story in here, was kind enough to contribute a story. Uh, the Herd and the Goodwill Mission, there are pictures of them in here. Um, oh, there's every one of us and the Vandals and Kenny Wood. Many of you folks from the 60s will have fond memories of Kenny Wood and the Soul Agents. And uh, there are some stories in here about Ken and some pictures too. Uh, pictures of the band and the pictures of the band, live performance pictures of the band. I was so glad I could find those. I can't remember who sent them to me, but whoever did, thank you so much. There's Fred Smith, or Fred Sharp and, and Paul Sharp. There's a bunch of stuff in there about them. Uh, there's my pal Ken Allison who passed away in January, RIP. And Kenny wrote a nice piece about the adventures that we had, there's Rick Wads from the Fortune Tellers and the Bluesmen who went on to international fame as uh, Rick Alexander became an a internationally known instructor, a steel guitar player and instructor. Bunch of stuff here about the Bluesmen and our adventures, the Fred Smith at Bluebird Records, everybody who was into records in those days, there were two places to go, the disc shop and the Bluebird, and the disc shop's in here too, there's pictures of that. Um, Bunch of stuff about Wonderland and how important it was to us here. There's some more stuff about the store club and John Ballone. You can't write a book about London music in the 60s without including John Ballone. So there's quite a lot of stuff in here about John. Stuff about the equipment we played, the instruments that we bought. There's Steve Garrison in there. There's Herman Gooden, London writer, who wasn't a rock and roll musician, but he sure looked like one there. And there's the Village Guild, his favorite band. There's some more about the Soul Agents when Dave Southern fronted, which David Arnold the Soul Agents. So uh, the Talisman, big band on the Western campus, just all kinds of stuff. And then, as I said, some stories here about my days on the road, places that I played and people I played with and famous people that we met and disasters averted and disasters lived through. And it's all here. And those stories will all be familiar to anybody who knew anybody that played in those days. I'm talking from the 1970s on who was on the road as a professional musician. If you were on the road, you're going to recognize these stories because I bet you've got ones that are 
bang on dead similar to what happened to us because I know from talking to a lot of guys that we share a lot of the same stories. So that's in here too. And a big scrapbook at the back of pictures that we could not get into them. Oh, there's Peter Garland. I was lucky enough to work with Peter Garland for three years uh, as a paid songwriter on his radio show. The only one in the country as far as we could find out. That was a lot of fun for me and there's some stuff in there about that. And then at the back, we've got... Uh, the scrapbook, all kinds of pictures that just didn't fit into the narrative, but uh, give you a sense of place of the 19s, mostly of the 1960s and people who were there. And uh, Anyway, I know I'm, I'm going on here and I don't want to do that. Uh, some pictures at the end. That's after Ken Ellison passed, his wife Cindy gave me a whole bunch of pictures of the bluesmen. And I wanted to put them in because that was my band. It was a very influential band in the city. And, uh, a lot of pictures that she gave us, including my favorite that I had captioned, the two childhood friends chasing and living the dream. And that's Ken, who recently passed, and me, um, rocking it out. Just, we, really, we, we really did live the dream, I'll tell you. So that's the book. If you'd like more information about how you can get your copy, it will not likely be available in stores. Uh, and there's a long reason for that, which I won't go into here, but to, to, uh, trying to keep the cost down and to put it in the stores increases the cost significantly. So we're asking you to, uh, we're asking people, if you're interested in the book, to uh, get your pre-order in. If you go to Facebook, go to my page, Jim Chapman on Facebook, and just send me a personal message. Say, Jim, I'd like to buy one, two, three, however many copies. I will send you the information on how you can do that and how you can make sure that we get your books to you. So just it's Jim Chapman on Facebook and uh, send me a personal message. Don't put it in the, you know, how to send a PM. Don't put it down in the stuff. Put it in the PM. So I've got them individually. It's easier for me to handle them that way. And we'll make sure that you get your copy of Battle of the Bands, London, Canada's 1960s teen music explosion.